So to Charlotte, tell me, like, obviously, like, there's a big journey that you've gone through from being 10 to being here today. So just give me some highlights so that we get some context and some background of what actually happened to you in your life. Well, yeah, so it's, it's a big question. Um, I'd say, um, uh, as I mentioned, high school, I, I really kind of um, threw myself at all types of opportunities. Um, and um, I, I'd say the turning point was probably college when I became more practicing. And, um, you know, I still want one story which comes to mind. I remember when I grew my beard for the first time. And it was like your size, mashallah. You've probably seen my, my poem, The Beauty of the Beard. And, um, and so I remember when I grew up, I was at a grammar school. And my dad, he was a doctor. And his, his friends were all doctors as well. You know, so, you know, you were hung around with doctor's families. And all his doctor friends send their kids to private schools and grammar schools. And he never did. And he was always guilty about that. And I was always curious about what, what grammar school would be like. So I went to uh, sixth form. I chose, we went to a gram, I went to a grammar school, Kirkham Grammar School. And it was very kind of stereotypical. You know, it was like rug, boys and rugby and, you know, girls playing hockey. And I was like the only, you know, one of the few Asian Muslims in the whole, the whole place, right? Um, and yeah, alhamdulillah, I think it worked in my advantage in the sense that it made me very confident, right? I could have kind of capitulated, but it actually made me, you know, I remember me and my friend would be like joking, like Asians first on the bus and we'd go for, you know, and things, you know, we'd like really take advantage of it. Um, and, um, I became practicing and I remember when I grew my beard, it was a real challenge because on the first day when I started, when I still remember this, I'd go in and I remember literally people were just laughing at me, right? Um, and they were laughing at me. Some of you know, I remember the silver, oh, the Asian Santa Claus, and this and that. Mm. And um, I, I still remember when I went to my form room. They actually, they actually made a circle around me. It's like kind of, it's like a nightmare. You can just kind of like visualize it. And even my chemistry tutor, my form tutor, he was pointing at me as well as all. They're like pointed like a cartoon, and they were laughing at me. Right? Wow. It was that bad, right? And and I actually went home crying. From that. I went to, you know, I, I didn't trim it or shave it or anything, you know, alhamdulillah, I kept it on. And uh, it, it, I, I then became the Muslim, right? You know, the, the Muslim, mm. like the biggest beard they'd seen in the village, forget the school, right? <laughs> and then I went from that to like giving talks. And no, none of the students would ever do the assembly. It was a very formal affair. You know, the, the head teacher would come with their gowns and mm. rise, you'd sing hymns, right? Um, and they'd give you, then I actually volunteered. I said, look, would you like me to give the sixth form assembly once? So what do you do the talk on? I said, um, the proof, the, the proof of the existence of the creator. Okay. Right. Mm. And so I did, you know, and alhamdulillah, even after that, I still remember like an atheist, uh, uh, girl, like the top science student in the whole school. She came to me and said, you know, it's called Janine, Janine, I think she said, um, you know, Tushar, that's, uh, you know, I'm an atheist, but that's the first time anyone's made me think and pause about my own beliefs. Wow. You know? Amazing. Uh, that really helped, and and uh, I even did the Bible readings. I'd take, I'll, I'll say to them, I say, look, the Bible readings, like they'd get the rugby champion to do the Bible readings, and he'd be like, and God, uh, the the, you know, it was just so boring and dry. Yeah. I said, look, you know, I'm I'm a Muslim, and I believe parts of the Bible are true. Just let me do it. I'll show you how to do it. You know, and so I, I still remember the, the the passage they gave me. I don't know which part of the Bible, but it's, it's something like, you know, if if you sin with your eyes, it's better for you to enter the kingdom of God blind than to sin with your eyes. If you sin with your hands, it's better for you to enter the kingdom of God with no hands. And and I thought, are they are they making the hand chopping thing? <laughs> you know, why did they give me this one? Yeah. You know, so that was the kind of person I was. I was very confident. I was growing in competence in my dean, um, and I was still doing everything, like the public speaking and the debating. I started opening Juma facilities. When I went to uni, um, that naturally evolved into ISOC, you know? And so uh, ISOC, alhamdulillah, was such a great experience for me. I went from secretary to the president of the ISOC. That exposed me to scholars, and, and you know, when they came, I'd, you know, host them. And, mm. and um, I think that that was a real, um, I think, and that's when I started getting into productivity, actually. I think that's when I first started reading Seven Habits of Highly Effective People and actually implementing it in my life, I think, from that time. So I think my initial journey, to answer your question, I think that I think they're the main stages before I started entering into the world of work. Um, I think that kind of activism, that kind of, um, you know, confidence in front of people, speaking, uh, engaging with people, you know, being bold, trying to challenge myself, challenging others' mode of thinking and working on myself and, and experimenting with things. I think that started from there and then and then uni as well. And and, and the downside is that, you know, the, like in terms of even at uni, I'd say like the, uh, uh, you know, I, I'm doing so many things and the challenge was focusing on the academics as well as, 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 you know, the ISOC and the Law Society and everything else. But I think that's a big part of my, my personality. It's, it's both my strength and my kind of kryptonite, if you like, right? Mm. You, know, I, you know, the danger is that you can take on too much and, and not master one. 
um, the advantage is that you can get so many experiences, get such a wide network. Uh, and I think that's what's led me to be an entrepreneur, you know, ultimately, to be honest. I think that personality and that, that kind of creativity, if you like, and being able to kind of source different skills and, 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 and do different activities, it's very suited now. You know, now, alhamdulillah, I'm very, you know, I've had quite a few, as you've seen from my biography, I've been in law, I've been in teaching, I've been in management, I've been a talib al-ilm. I've, I've been through quite a few phases. Um, and I think it's naturally evolved into an entrepreneur because now I can use all those skills, you know, uh, and all, all of it's useful, alhamdulillah. Mashallah, amazing. So I think, I think it's great because what you're saying is it's that whole uh, T-shaped thing, right? It's like that you have a broad uh, kind of spectrum of knowledge, but then you have a depth of knowledge in that as well. And I think it's one of the best things that entrepreneurs can do and CEOs can do, you know, in, in, in terms of developing them. And I think all the experiences you've had have really helped you to become that person, which is amazing, mashallah. 